So initially the lead was, it was in Seal Beach. I took a look at the notes and it stated that there was a retaining wall that had some leaning. So when I showed up to the project or the property looking for a, what I thought was just a little retaining wall, turned out to be a six foot retaining wall on the backside of a house that had a 30 foot, 40 foot drop. And the retaining wall had moved vertically and horizontally about five inches. So I'm taking a look at it, asking her some questions, and then that movement happened five days ago. I was like, oh, really? So that, so that changed the entire, it changed everything. And I started looking at the rest of the backyard. The entire backyard was moving with the wall. They had actually just put in quite a bit of money for a pool, jacuzzi, um, barbecue area, pergola. The entire backyard was redone. And what had happened was the one of the irrigation lines was not capped or it was cut off or whatever the problem was. Um, but the water just built up against the wall, all the hydrostatic pressure, uh, just put too much weight. The retaining wall couldn't, couldn't handle it. And it released and it moved. And that's how we got involved. So typically what you do on a retaining wall that's on a slope is you have to do tie backs in conjunction with vertical piers. So you have horizontal support and vertical support at the same time. So that was the proposed method. It's not an outside of the box special method. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a cookie cutter repair for retaining walls in this situation. So on this particular project, there was eight vertical piers and eight tie backs. And I believe the span on the wall was approximately 60 feet. So we were on eight foot centers, seven to eight foot centers. So in this case, uh, this is a larger project. The guys would get out there, assess everything. This is on a slope as well. So there's not a lot of room in order to work. So they'd have to count, account for scaffolding or any necessary means because they have to start drilling into the coring into the uh, block wall in order to start uh, putting in the tie backs. So they'll assess everything, then they'll start, first thing they'll do is start coring for the tie backs. And each foreman can do it differently. On this case, I agreed with the foreman to put the tie backs in to actually hold, to support it horizontally, to get that taken care of first. Because then when we start excavating underneath it for vertical support, I would just feel more comfortable with that being stabilized uh, horizontally or laterally. Once they've done the coring, they've drive in the steel, they're gonna go ahead and pour back the holes that they've cored. Next thing they're gonna do is start uh, excavating and digging for the vertical piers. So they're gonna start digging the holes, they're gonna start prepping the footing, uh, they're gonna start driving the steel until they get into competent soil, whichever engineering specs are for that. Um, once they reach all that, then they're gonna start installing brackets. Um, and uh, for the tie backs and also to connect to the footing at the base of the retaining wall. And then from there, they're gonna put everything under pressure and um, stabilize, stabilize the wall and then clean everything up, backfill everything. Okay, so we're here at the Seal Beach product. Just showed up, I wanted to go over some things with the customer. And with the foreman, we're doing the final stage right now, which is the uh, deep injection process. Um, I took a look at the project, everything looks good, nice and clean. Uh, we're actually getting ready to drive the tubes into the soil right now to stabilize the soil. Um, I went over it with the client, went over everything with her. Um, she seems to be happy with the entire process, the finished product. And uh, we should be finishing up here in probably about a couple hours. So once we do that, stabilize the soil, they can go ahead and fix the uh, concrete, the, um, the pavers, um, I think that's pretty much it. I'm not quite sure what they're gonna do. The pergola may have to be adjusted as well. But the main goal here was peace of mind for the customer for sure. They were not just afraid of losing the retaining wall, they were afraid of losing their entire investment in the backyard.